Hello my dears, my name is Mariana and welcome to my channel. You're looking at my pride and joy behind me, the books. So today I'm going to talk a little bit about myself actually and tell you the story of how I became an archetypal tarot reader. It's a little weird talking about myself but sometimes in the modern days of social media you stumble upon somebody that seems really cool and it looks like they've always been doing exactly what they've been doing exactly the way they've been doing it and that is not true at all and certainly not true for me so let's get into the um little bit wild and a little bit boring um but very meaningful journey of how i got here <music> So if you haven't watched the video of me kind of outlining my 20 year spiritual journey, there's a link up here somewhere for you to watch that. It's it's an interesting story. That's probably a little bit more interesting than this one. So I do recommend it. It'll, it'll give you some context. But I don't think I can start any story about how I got where I am without first talking about my grandpa. My grandfather, Charles William Edward Phillips, but we called him Bill. He was an armchair scholar. Um, he was devoted to learning, to knowledge, and he was absolutely fascinated with Jungian theory. When I was 12 or 13, um, for my birthday, he actually gifted me Joseph Campbell's Power of Myth series that aired on PBS in like the 80s. When I watched that, like everything changed for me in my life. And someone that uh, Joseph Campbell talks a lot about in his work is Carl Jung. And so I had come in contact with Jung before through Joseph Campbell and through my grandpa a little bit. And so the story really begins when I was 24 and spending a Saturday roaming through my grandpa's library in the attic. And I stumbled upon a book by Carl Jung and thought, I should probably read this. And actually, I have it, and uh, let me get it. That could have ended in my death. So the book I found was this guy, The Undiscovered Self, which is probably the shortest of Jung's books. Look how old this thing is. Can you see the price? It's 50 cents. <laughs> this, is, this is an old book. I think it was published in 1960, so. So I, I read The Undiscovered Self and my whole world changed. I suddenly realized that there was such a thing as the psychology of soul. There was an ability for me to dive into the depths of who I was in a spiritual way, but also in a psychological way to examine myself um, and to really learn about the archetypal essence of who I was. And so I began this like deep dive into Jungian theory and I read everything I could get my hands on, everything that my grandfather had in his library, which was a lot. I'm not even gonna pretend like I got through even half of the books my grandfather had on Jung. It was ridiculous. And also he never got through half the books he had on Jung because if my grandfather was one thing, he was full of a lot of hot air. Anyway. I started my Jungian analysis um, and, you know, broke myself open and did the inner work. Through that inner work, I realized that I was really, really tired of pretending to be happy um, doing what I was doing. At the time in my life, I was a performer, professional singer, professional actor, and I was doing pretty well. I had a long journey still ahead of me to get where I envisioned myself, and I was just really tired of being disappointed um, and really tired of only half of myself being present um, in, in the choices I was making for my life. The part of me that was deep, the part of me that was interested in knowledge and deeper diving into who I was, that part really couldn't be active. And so I put my acting and my singing and my performance on pause and decided to get my graduate degree. And that was a wild decision. <laughs> I can't tell you how much I was freaking out over that decision. And I just took the leap. I just applied. I got in and I was preparing to start this journey um, 
into my intellect, into knowledge. And I was also at the same time, you know, on the spiritual journey. And um, I went on this yoga retreat and there was a tarot reader there actually. One of the people on the retreat was a tarot reader. She had brought her cards and I had never had a real tarot reading before. So I got this reading on this retreat and I wish I could remember all the cards. I got the few that still stick out in my mind were so ridiculously right. I don't know if you've had this experience. I bet you probably have. You have a reading, usually your first reading probably, that reflects back what you're asking in the moment. It's important then, but it goes so much deeper. It reaches somehow into everything that you are, and that's what this reading did. It was only like 20 minutes long, but the final card I got, of course, was the High Priestess. And I remember the, the woman who gave me the reading, she, because we're on a yoga retreat, she asked me if I wanted to be a yoga teacher, if that's what I was trying to do. I think I really laughed in her face, actually. <laughs> Even though I wasn't thinking about being a tarot reader yet, I wasn't thinking about doing anything, you know, that we typically associate with the high priestess yet. I just knew that there was something in me coming alive. There was a part of me that needed to dive into the unconscious depths and and mine wisdom there that I'd wanted to grasp onto for so long but didn't know how to do that. I just fully, fully immersed myself in the tarot. I bought the same deck that she had. It was the um, Druidcraft tarot. Still have it, though I don't use it that much because it's really mean to me. You know, I don't, I don't know if I need more people being mean to me. Um, I think, I think I cover that enough in my own brain. I read like crazy. I learned the cards super fast throughout the length of my degree. I still studied the tarot. I was still working with it very much, and I graduated with this um, education in western intellectual traditions which is a fancy way of saying just like what people thought <laughs> in history and so i had this knowledge of occultism and archetypes and experience of the world of society of meaning it was just such a beautiful marriage of this study i had done over the last two years with the magic of the cards it was this perfect bridge between really having a ground an educational background and then going into the weird mystical world that is tarot. So for a while I did, you know, the, the Saturn return thing where I had no idea what the hell I was gonna do with myself. I was um, a singer at churches, a temp um, office administrator, uh, a tutor to the rich New York City kids. That job sucked, I'll tell you that one. I was flopping around a little bit for a while and I just decided that's it. I want to commit to this. And for me, it was never about like money or security. I mean, obviously, I you need to live. I just I'm I'm a I'm a true Scorpio. What's money? What's money? When you when can, you have, can have, meaning. have meaning. There was nothing else for me in this world. That this was the thing that set me afire, kept me afire, and I needed to pursue it. And so I started my little tarot business, and it was very hesitant at first. I did the Etsy thing for a while, and I am. So still very embarrassed about it, but I I took these baby steps into becoming a professional reader and there is a big learning curve. I was a professional reader for a few years and it was fine, but there was something missing. And this is the uncomfortable bit that I don't think people like to talk about too much because we have this like fantasy in our modern Western culture that we find the thing and the thing is the thing. It's almost like the new version of the happy ending, right? Where it used to be we find the man. <laughs> it's so ridiculous. Now it's we find the destiny. We find the purpose and it's it. And there's nothing else. And once we get it and we hold on to it, our life is going to be perfect. And that is not at all true. <laughs> it's never true that there is one thing, that there's one experience that gives us all the answers. And I loved the tarot. I loved speaking the language of the tarot. Um, I hated reading for people. <laughs> it was an actual problem. How do I read for strangers that um, are really going through crises? Every time I would see like the notification that someone booked a reading, I would actually feel a little panicked because I was just so overwhelmed that there was this burden on me to perform this magical work that felt far bigger than me and felt like I was just 
play acting, at, at knowing how to harness and, and understand. And so I almost gave up. I was happier when I wasn't booking anything. I knew that that meant something was really, really wrong. And I thought, this just isn't it. I didn't give up and I'm really glad I didn't. I decided I needed to go full, fully into it. So I returned to my roots. I came back to my love of Jung and Joseph Campbell and I started thinking about what lit me up. And when I was looking for a reading, what I was hoping to get out of it, I realized that what I needed from a reading every time I got one was not answers, which is always what I felt like I had to provide for people. It was depth. It was the meeting of my depth. It was the container in which I could dive into that place where I felt myself truly alive, which is what I found when I was reading Jungian theory or when I was listening to Joseph Campbell's lectures. I wanted to provide that place for people with the medium of the cards themselves that have so much wisdom to give. And I decided I needed to create an archetypally focused reading. I did a lot of testing and trying out different things and spreads. Eventually, I came to something that felt right, it felt good, and I did this um, little like beta test of this new style of reading and I sold out of it like really fast, like everybody was really excited to try it out too. I was giving readings that were better than any other reading I had ever given before, that meant more to the, the clients, that gave me like chills sometimes. And I realized this was it. This is what was missing. For years, I had been trying to be a tarot reader. I had been trying to use the cards to get people the clarity and answers they needed about things in their life, when really what I wanted to do was to be a space maker. Um, I wanted to create the container in which people could meet themselves, and the cards were the portal to that. And once I reoriented my vision of the tarot, my understanding how, um, you know, my philosophy, essentially, of tarot and tarot reading, it was all different. I am so grateful that whatever thing in me decided not to give up and to try a new path told me to do it because I am so in love with the work I do now. Every time I give a, a good reading, it feels just as much like it was for me as my client. Not only do I feel this like energy of being a channel for something deep to transform within them, I, I remember what it means to be a soul in the world. And I can see that awakening happening on my client's face. And that's so profound. It's, it's really beyond words. And I still have bad readings. <laughs> um, you're going to get readings that suck. And you're going to give readings that suck if you're a reader. It's, it's unavoidable. But the ratio of extraordinarily life-changing readings to garbage readings that suck is really, really different now. <laughs> Eight times out of ten walk away from my readings now feeling like astonished by what happens in that container. So that's why I call myself an archetypal tarotist because I don't do a normal style of reading and I, God, I hope I never will again. <laughs> I love the particular work that I do, bringing in depth psychology and mysticism and mythology rather than just trying to hack away at an answer. It's changed everything. If you also are kind of interested in archetypes and depth psychology and Jungian thought and mythology, mythopoetics, you should definitely make sure to, well, you follow me on Instagram, subscribe, do the stuff. I actually have an offering, a free offering that you can grab. I have a little archetypal tarot booklet. It's kind of a breakdown of how I orient an archetypal tarot reading, what that looks like, what important things you need to know, how to kind of practice it with yourself. And if you want that, there's actually a link in the description for you to get that PDF booklet. And keep your ear to the ground because I'm not announcing anything officially yet, but there may or may not be a wait list uh, coming up. This one, this one is gonna be a multi-week, really, really um, extraordinary intensive. So there's a wait list somewhere maybe in the description for that. Thanks for kind of hanging out and learning a little bit about me, a little bit about my journey. I love hearing about other people's journeys too, so um, share that with me in the comments as well. And that's it, my friends. Have a beautiful, meaningful day.